hello friends. So since it is so beautiful outside, I thought that we would do story time outside today. I hope that you have gotten out and enjoyed this beautiful sunshine. And if you haven't, then take the time to do that because it is absolutely beautiful outside. So I hope that you've had a chance to get outside and play. And if you haven't, then take advantage of that this afternoon. Um, if you didn't know, today is pajama day, so I have my PJs on. Um, I also have a special book for you all. I will post that in a separate video um, because it is pajama day. So the first book that I wanted to share with you is about our bugs. And this is the Icky Bug Alphabet book. So I will share that story first and then I have another special story for you guys today because it is pajama day. Parents, if you didn't know, uh, Mrs. Mungle is posting the morning and afternoon announcements on the Templeton Facebook page. So if you want to tune into those, they are there for you. Um, so yeah, I'll go ahead and get started with our story time today. I hope you guys are enjoying this beautiful sunshine. The Icky Bug Alphabet Book by Jerry Pelota and Ralph Masello. All right, so if it's an alphabet book, what letter are we gonna start with? That's right, A. A. A is for alphabet book. It is also for ant. Ants are hard workers. Ants are able to carry things that are larger and heavier than they are. They always seem to be trying to build something. All right, friends, what letter comes next? That's right, B. B is for bumblebee. Because the bumblebee is furry, it is able to stay outside in cooler weathers than other types of bees. Bumblebees fly from flower to flower collecting nectar to make honey. All right, what comes next? C. C is for cricket. The cricket likes to hide under things. It makes noise by rubbing its wings together. Isn't it fun to listen to lots of crickets at night? I love listening to crickets at night. I like their songs. All right, next is D. D is for the dragonfly. D is for dragonfly. The dragonfly has four wings. When dragonflies stop flying and take a rest, they are unable to fold their wings back. There's our D page for dragonfly. I already showed you E, but we're gonna read it, ready? E. E is for earwig. No one seems to know how the earwig got its name. It does not crawl into people's ears. It has a pincher at the tail and end of its body. There's the earwig. All right, next is F. All right, here we go. F is for firefly. Fireflies shine like light bulbs in the dark. When they light up, they can find each other more easily. Fireflies are easy to catch because they fly so slowly. Do you guys like catching fireflies in the summer? That's one of Mrs. Webb's favorite things to do. I love catching fireflies. That's one of my favorite activities for summer. So something to look forward to. G. G is for grasshoppers. Grasshoppers can jump really well. If you try to catch one, it will usually jump away just as you are about to touch it. Those darn grasshoppers. H. All right, let's get over here to this side. There we go. H is for horsefly. The green-headed horsefly has pretty eyes, but it has a terrible bite. If one of them lands on you, be careful. Yikes! Push it away. Yes, horseflies do hurt. So if one lands on you, just shoo it away. All right, next comes I. I is for Isle Moth. 
The Isle Moth has two spots on its lower wings that look like eyes. When birds go near these moths and see the spots, they become startled and fly away. Do you guys remember what we call that? Where they're trying to disguise themselves or make themselves look different so that predators don't eat them? Do you guys remember that big long word? It's called camouflage. So the isle moth uses these two spots on its wings to camouflage itself and make it look like it has eyes that are watching the bird. Next comes Jay. Jay is for Japanese beetle. These beetles love to eat flowers. Sometimes they eat so much that they cause lots of damage to plants. Oh, somebody started their lawnmower. Gotta take care of their yard. K. K is for Katie did. Katie dids, like crickets, make noise by rubbing their wings together. The noise they make sounds like their name. Katie did, Katie did, Katie did. Sometimes they say, Katie didn't. <laughs> Do you think the Katie dids really sometimes say Katie didn't? Have you ever heard? Listen next time you hear them. L, of course, L is for ladybug. This insect is really called a ladybird beetle. They are so round, it is hard to believe they can fly. They can. They have their wings tucked inside their shell. They have this outer shell that helps protect them and then they open that up and their wings come out and that's how they fly. I bet you didn't know that. All right, now for M. M is for monarch. The monarch butterfly is known for migrating. It flies from the Northern United States all the way to Mexico. Birds know that monarchs taste awful so they never go near them. is for noceums. Noceums is a word for tiny insects that are almost impossible to see. They are flies that are really called um, midges. They can make people miserable because they bite. Mm, interesting. Mrs. Webb learned something new. I didn't know that there was such a bug called a noceum. It's amazing what you learn when you read books. All right, ready for O? O is for orb weaver. Spiders that make round orb-shaped webs are call called orb weavers. Many people are frightened by spiders, but most of them will not hurt you. There's the orb weaver spider. Did you know that spiders are actually not insects? They're arachnids, so. We will talk about some differences between arachnids and spiders maybe when we try and get on a meeting sometime this week. Or Miss Webb will just make a video telling you the difference between insects and spiders. P is for praying mantis. It is called a praying mantis because it looks like it is kneeling and praying. Gardeners and farmers like them because they eat pesky bugs that are harmful to vegetables and other plants. So if you see a praying mantis, don't hurt it because it's actually helping your garden. It's making it so that it doesn't have those bugs that your uh, mom or dad doesn't want in their garden. So don't hurt these guys, they're helpers. Q, Q is for queen bee. It is, in a beehive, there is only one queen bee she can lay thousands of eggs per day. All of the other bees in the hive take good care of the queen bee. She's kind of like your mom, queen of the house, right? <laughs> R. R is for red admiral. This butterfly is not bright red like an apple or a cherry. It is a rusty orange color. 
Red admirals are very difficult to catch because they fly fast and erratically, which is probably good for them. They're less likely to get eaten by birds or other predators that want to eat them. All right, time for S. S is for scorpion. Scorpions are really scary looking. They have two front pinchers, just like lobsters. At the end of their tails, they have stingers. Would you like to be stung by a scorpion? The answer to that question is no, you would not. Usually scorpions, tails, stingers, don't have enough poison in them to hurt humans, but it would still hurt a lot and you would not want to get stung by one. T. Oh, here we go, another spider, ready? T is for tarantula. The tarantula is a big furry spider. It can grow to be as large as your hand. Tarantulas and scorpions are found in warm climates. The wind is messing with my book, guys. It's worth it though. I needed some fresh air, how about you? You. You is for unfinished painting. On this page, the illustrator forgot to finish the painting of the picture. Hmm, what kind of bug do you think he forgot to finish? It looks like some sort of beetle to me. I guess we won't know, he didn't tell us. That's not very nice. Oh goodness, I can't turn the page, guys. Ah, there we go. There it is, you. You is for unicorn beetle. Okay, that's better. Now the illustrator has finished the painting. The unicorn beetle has a single horn sticking out of its head. There's the finished picture. All right, ready for V? Here we go. V is for velvet mite. These creatures are red and so small you can hardly so see them. About 30 of them could fit on the fingernail of your thumb. So you guys might have seen these out on our playground. Sometimes they come out and they're the little red bugs that are so, 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 so tiny. Don't worry, they won't hurt you. You should leave them alone though, because they have stuff to do. W. There's another spider. W is for water spider. This spider makes its home underwater. It weaves a special web which allows it to bring air under the water. It catches and eats things that swim or float nearby. Huh. Cool. X. Ooh, that's a cool looking beetle. It's got an X on its back. Let's find out its name. X is for the marking on the back of this bug. We could not find a bug whose name began with the letter X. This bug is called a cotton st stainer. So there you go. It's a cotton stainer and it has an X on its back. All right, you ready for Y? Y is for yellow plant bug. This bug is very easy to see because it is a bright color. It has six legs just like all other insects. What bright color is this bug? Can you tell? It might not show through as well on my camera, but it's a really bright yellow. It's pretty awesome. All right, last but not least, Z. Z is for zillions of zebra butterflies. Zillions of them flying all at once would be a beautiful sight to see. I would agree with that statement. I really like butterflies. I like that there's all sorts of different kinds and these are zebra butterflies. And that, my friends, is the end of the icky bug alphabet book. 
I hope you enjoyed our story. Parents, if you are not able to get through the whole thing, that is fine. You may listen to it in sections. That's usually how I do alphabet books. We'll do a few letters at a time, but I just wanted you guys to have the whole book. Thanks guys, have a wonderful day.